You're 84 too? I'm 84, yes sir. Yeah, we got bad vintages for Yeah, oh, it's one of the worst. Oh, thank you, thank you. Have you spent any time with Mark Dagnall, by the way? No. Bro, he's, he's ridiculous. He's so good. No, he, he's, he's, he's so good. Yeah, he's on his shit. He's young too, is he younger than us? He's younger, yeah, he's 30, 38. I think he's 38, yeah, he's, yeah. I think he was, I think he's an 85. Okay. I yeah. looked it up the other day, he's definitely younger than us. Smidge, yeah. like that? Yeah. All right, cool, we're already rolling, so you guys can just go out. Oh, we're already rolling, oh, we're like, this, this is what we okay. do, this uh, is what we do. Have fun. Welcome to episode two of Mind the Game podcast with LeBron James and JJ Redick, presented by Uninterrupted and 342 Productions. First of all, just wanted to say thank you for all of you who listened and watched to episode one. We greatly appreciate uh, the positive response from all of the stuff that we talked about. There's a lot more of X and O stuff in episode two. The title of episode two is simply the hardest actions to guard in the NBA. No, not necessarily the hardest players to guard, but some of the best players in the world are involved directly in these actions, as you will see when we break it down. And two of the actions that we focus primarily on in this episode are the Golden State split screens and inverted pick and rolls. All right, before we get to the plays that we're going to cover, I want to go over some of the key terminology. All right, the first two words are tilt and fire. I want to be clear here. Every team in the NBA has a code word or a word for a double team. A lot of teams I played on, we had a color scheme. So blue was a double team from the nail. Green was a double team from the baseline side. In this case, tilt and fire represent those colors. Tilt means in a post up, a double team from the baseline side. Fire means in a post up, a double team from the nail. And of course we covered what the nail was in episode one. Next two terms are hedge and blitz. So these are common terms in pick and roll coverage. Now in the NBA right now, not a lot of teams hedge in pick and rolls. A hedge is simply when the screener's defender jumps out past the screener and tries to reroute the ball handler around the screener's defender, and then the screener's defender will retreat back to the screener. Again, not a lot of teams do that primarily because everybody can shoot the basketball. Sometimes in inverted pick and rolls, or sometimes as teams are targeting matchups, certain players will hedge. So for instance, if LeBron James is being guarded by Jonathan Kaminga and he wants to get a switch for Steph Curry, he will have whoever is guarding Steph Curry come set a pick and roll. And more times than not, Steph Curry will hedge, reroute LeBron, and then return to his man. That is what a hedge is. A blitz is simply a double team on a pick and roll. All right, a ghost screen, or as LeBron calls it, a bluff screen. A ghost screen is simply when you run into set a pick and roll and you essentially don't stop, but you just run past the pick and roll and you either go to the three-point line or you slip to the basket. That's essentially what a ghost screen is. It's a ghost screen because you're not really there. You're essentially just trying to create confusion for the two defenders involved in what looks like a pick and roll, but is actually just a ghost screen. Tag and 2-9 go hand in hand. We have a defensive three-second rule in the NBA. So as a defender, you're only allowed to be in the paint for three seconds without guarding anyone. There's two ways around this. You can tag a cutter, which simply means touching a cutter as he goes through the paint. 2-9 is simply a game of cat and mouse. How long can you be in the paint in a help position while not guarding anyone, but not get a three second violation? 1-1000, 2-1000. You're trying to be in and out 
in 2.9 seconds. That's what we mean by 2.9. So when you're watching a game and you see a player with one foot in the paint, one foot out of the paint, one foot in the paint, one foot out of the paint, almost like a tap dance, he's 2.9-ing. A couple other simple terms, backside, weak side, strong side. Strong side is simply the side of the floor where the ball is. So if a player is on the right wing, the right side of the floor is the strong side. If a player is positioned in the corner, while that player has the ball on the right wing, then the player in the corner is on the strong side of the floor. If a player is in the left corner, opposite the ball, the other side of the court, he's in the weak side. Backside is a little bit interchangeable with weak side. Backside is also a play where a player starts in a corner opposite the ball. Let's say the point guard passes to the five man at the top of the key. The player in the corner then receives a pin down and comes along the three-point line and gets a dribble handoff from the five man. That's backside. Think Manu Ginobili in San Antonio. Or even better, think J.J. Redick in Philadelphia. All right, I want to go over what is called a Verizhou screen. A Verizhou screen is actually named after LeBron's teammate in Cleveland, Anderson Verizhou. And all a Verizhou screen is, is when a screener flips the side and angle of the screen. Let me show you. In this case, the X's are the offensive players, the O's are the defensive players. So in this case, the big man would run into this pick and roll, the defender would follow, and as he gets to the screen, instead of setting the screen on this side where the, defend, the offensive player would get to his right hand, he simply flips the angle on the screen side and verizhows it, and the offensive player gets to drive away from the defense because most of the time, this defender of the screener has followed and is assuming he's going to provide help defense on this side. Bears out. Chaos ensues. Okay. Blind pig is something that we reference. Blind pig is a triangle offense concept. Uh, I had to guard this concept playing against the Lakers. Pau Gasol and Kobe Bryant would oftentimes be the two players involved in this. And then against the Knicks, oftentimes it could be Carmelo Anthony involved, Raymond Felton, Jeremy Lin. Essentially what blind pig is, the ball is right here with this player. Here is your offensive player, the X right here. O's are the defensive player. The X is being denied. This is Kobe Bryant. And this year, this is Jalen Brunson. Isaiah Hartenstein will flash to the elbow. The ball then goes to Isaiah Hartenstein right here. Jalen Brunson, who is being denied, then has a clear path to go receive the ball or get a drop-off pass, dribble handoff, whatever, turn the corner, create havoc, blind pig. All right. Golden State post splits, a big part of this episode. We have so much visual component to this. You guys hopefully will understand this at the end. Uh, again, this is another triangle concept. Um, let's do a two-man post split to start. How about that? So here's the ball. The ball goes into the post. Now, this pass for Golden State is not to score. This pass is to get Steph Curry and Klay Thompson into the action. So Steph can split with Clay Thompson. Clay can back cut towards the basket. He can curl towards the basket, or he can come pop for three. And that's only one option. There are many options in this offense. Let's say Kevon Looney wants to get involved here. They throw it in to Draymond Green. Steph goes towards Clay Thompson. Maybe Clay Thompson curls to the basket. Kavon Looney then cleans up Steph. Ball comes out to Steph. That's post splits. <laughs> it's impossible to guard. The other thing I just wanted to tell you guys, on this episode, for these drawings, Mab drew these. I did not draw these courts. 
This clip went out on social, America's play, baseline out of bounds, pick the picker, whatever you want to call it. This guy underneath the basket on a baseline out of bounds play, B-O-B, baseline out of bounds. There should be an extra O, but who cares? It's just B-O-B. This guy right here, that's the shooter. This is Kyle Korver. This is Steph Curry. This is Ray Allen. This is Duncan Robinson. He's going to set a back screen right here, a rip screen for a bigger wing usually. Maybe you get a switch, maybe you don't. Maybe you get a layup here underneath the basket. This guy in the corner over here, this is Bam. This is DeAndre Jordan with me. This is Joel Embiid with me. This big guy then goes and sets a screen for the shooter to come off towards the three-point line. So if you don't get a layup, you might get a three in the corner. America's play. Pick the picker. The other concept that we talk a lot about this episode is inverted pick and roll. Pick and roll, as most basketball fans know it, is simply a ball handler, usually a point guard, getting a ball screen, so a live ball dribble, from a big guy, a five man, right? A center. Think Kenny Smith and Akeem Olajuwon. Think John Stockton and Karl Malone. Think Kobe and Shaq, right? It's a pick and roll. A normal pick and roll, the smaller player has the ball, the bigger player sets a screen for him. Inverted pick and roll is simply when you invert that. In this case, a bigger player has the ball and a smaller player, oftentimes a really good shooter, sets a ball screen for the bigger player. Very rare that big guys can do this, but certainly a lot of them can. Joel Embiid, Nikola Jokic, Anthony Davis, Giannis, of course. Uh, Bigger wings will also run inverted pick and rolls. So this is Duncan Robinson setting a pick and roll for Jimmy Butler. This is me setting a screen for Ben Simmons. That is an inverted pick and roll. We actually had a call in Philadelphia. It was called 12 rub rifle. So 12 was just a one-two pick and roll. I'm the two man. Ben was the one man. Rub was our name for a high pick and roll which means in the center of the court. Rifle, I'll get to that in a second. So an inverted pick and roll would be the smaller player setting a screen for Ben Simmons, right? If I set a good screen, Ben could get all the way to the basket. Sometimes I would slip to three, though. In that case, Ben would throw me the ball. And sometimes, like against San Antonio Spurs late in the game, I would make the shot and get fouled and have a four-point play to hit a game winner. But other times, this would be Joel Embiid. This is the rifle part. The rifle just means chase action. Sometimes the definition of a concept is in the word. If I said go chase the ball, what are you going to do? You're going to pass the ball and run after it. So 12 rub rifle is a inverted high pick and roll followed by chase action. So if I didn't have a shot, I would throw the ball to Joel Embiid and we'd go right into chase dribble handoff. 12 rub rifle. Miami Heat, game four. 2018 playoffs. Dagger. Do you look at basketball uh, as a puzzle in some ways? I was with Missoula in September. He said competition is a puzzle and you have to approach it through intellect. And what I... What I find when I talk to you or when I talk to CP or I listen to you guys, Rondo, of course, who we had on the pod um, last year, it's like, it's exploitation. (laughs) I used the word manipulation once with Chris and he did not like that word. So I'm going to use a different word today. It's exploitation. You're exploiting and sometimes it's maybe basketball IQ. Sometimes you're maybe exploiting a matchup. I know that I was exploited a lot at the at the end of my career because by that time, it was about target hunting. Yeah. And oftentimes, when I was on the court, I was the target. It is like and it's pick, on the white, pick on the white guy. Huh? This, this is <laughs> bullshit, man. I don't like that, man. It, it bothered me so much. <laughs> I mean, I remember, dude, when I was with Philly and like, we ended up not playing you guys in the playoffs, but like that first year in Philly, because I was guarding point guards that year. 
because Ben wasn't yeah, yeah. good enough on the ball yet. Right. right. They had him guarding bigger wings. Right. So I had to guard point guards first time in my career. So like all of a sudden I'm navigating a pickup point with Damian Lillard. People at would never feet. understand that either, by the way. Yeah. People so. people that just watch <laughs> casual basketball would never understand if you've been guarding two guards or small fours or whatever your whole career, and then one year you have to make the shift to now guarding point guards, it's a whole different your your antennas is now like it's, it was so different. Screens are coming. You're not used to getting hit with screens. You know, like it's a whole different. If the big don't talk to you, get cracked. You like what the fuck are you guys doing back there? And nine times out of ten, most bigs are not going to talk anyway. No, I remember there was a game with like <laughs> with Charlotte and Kemba Walker. You know, he's a shifty yeah, motherfucker. He's a shifty motherfucker. There's and he's not too doing, many guys. He's yeah, doing yeah. that little left drop yeah, 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 move, and sure. I'm like, come on, man. Like, yeah, what am I supposed to yeah, do? Yeah, for but real. we were. I remember we played you guys a few times that year. And I'm I'm on the point guard, and you're just like, come here every time. <laughs> Fuck you, Braun. Fuck you, Braun. That's T. Lou, man. No, that's not me. Uh, uh, you know, my basketball IQ is not that good. But I think I think part of it, it's not for me at least as a, as a, as like a when I played, of course, but also as a as an observer now. Yeah. Part of the matchup thing. So if I go switch on you. Mm-hmm. Right, you've now got a favorable matchup. Part of it is not just so that you can get a shot. Part of it, like basketball, boils down to: can you put two on the ball? Yeah, and now you create the four on three on the backside. Yeah, I don't think many people know that. You know why? Because everyone now it's a narrative of this thing called: I have a bag, mm. or he doesn't have a bag. It bothers the fuck out of me. Everyone thinks just because you get a favorable matchup that it means it's one-on-one time. Let's play ones. That's all you hear the kids talk about now. You want to play ones? You want to play ones? What What the fuck is this? Is that we're, this, is not a, this is not Jordan versus Bird Nintendo. <laughs> like, <laughs> we're, this, it's five on five. And yes, if you have an opportunity to have a favorable matchup and you can beat your man, but realize something. Most great teams are going to send help. And can you make the right reads? Can you make the right reads? Can you instill confidence in your teammates to win? You've scored twice on that favorable matchup. Do you know that the double is coming? And you have to see it either coming from the tilt on the baseline or from the fire from the nail. You have to be ready for that. Like, and it takes time for guys. And some guys don't want to learn and won't learn because they just want to play once. They, I've had guys on the court that literally said to me before, why y'all doubling me? Mm. Stop doubling me. Let me play once. You have 40. <laughs> no, no. You have 40. We're going to double you. Not because, not only because you're great, but also... I know none of your teammates have been in a rhythm all game. And we're going to see if they can make a shot. And if they do, Derek Jeter, salute, cap to you. Two things on that. I think the Clippers game the other night was a great example of that. So, first of all, they're one of the most switch-heavy teams in the NBA. They are. So it wasn't abnormal that you got going in the fourth quarter and they were switching Daniel Tice onto you. That Mm -hmm. is their normal defense. It is. It is. So you hit a couple shots on him. Then they start doubling, right? Yep. And then you're making the read. Um, there's like a there's a there's a downhill or, or like a snowball effect going down a hill to this, right? Mm-hmm. It's like one thing leads to another. So I think in some ways, the the player has to establish that he can score in that matchup. Correct. And then the next part is he has to establish he's going to then make the right read Correct. if you double. Correct. Then all of a sudden, if you're the offensive team. All bets are off. Yeah, you're going to get yeah, whatever you you're gonna want. You're going to get whatever you want, then. Because the, the defense has no choice. There's nothing they can do then. They, they're Not only are they off balance, they just like, oh, shit, we, it's nothing we can do. Because not only is the guy that's been dominating the one-on-one matchup making the right reads individually in that matchup, he's been scoring, he's been getting fouled, he's been drawing attention. But now you're seeing the double, and now his teammates are making shots too. And the momentum shifts... The, the offensive team, there's nothing, they can, there's nothing they can do wrong. Do you think teams concede the switch too much? Like, do you think teams switch too much? Yes. Do you think more teams should just 
If you if you're Atlanta, should you just hedge with Trey Young? Absolutely, absolutely. We we. It's funny you say that. In the Clipper game, we had a, a we had switching built in versus Kawhi and versus James and whatever the case may be, and I vetoed it in the in the second half because I know I know T. Lou yeah. more than any other player that's ever been with T. Lou, and I know he plays target ball too, and it got to a point where. I knew in order for us to get back into the game, switching anybody else into Kawhi, it's not it's not favorable for us. I might as well just get ready for get ready for the Wizards. So I vetoed it. Are you able to to do that on a nightly basis though? Like take that that matchup. It's asking and, a lot, LeBron. And, 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 it's asking a lot. At thirty nine, with with, I think I saw it the other day. I think I have like seventy thousand minutes. I was, I was explaining to my wife the other day. She asked me, how am I feeling when I came home after a game? I said, babe, just imagine buying a 2003 Escalade and it's 2024 and you never change the tires. <clears throat> so rub my feet, please. <laughs> <laughs> And I've never changed the tires. These are the same tires from 2003. So can I do it every night? I don't want to say I could do it for a whole game. I mean, I can't. I'll take the challenge for sure. But that's just I'm a competitor. Yeah. I was born that way. I was taught that way. I fucking, I'll die on the court because I just love it so much. Am I, am I being realistic? I got to pick my spots. Definitely got to pick my spots. You've also picked your spots, though, on the offense, Ben. Like, I was talking with Darvin about this, and and I've spoken with Austin, too. There's there's definitely a, a stronger ability. I don't want to know if ability is the right word, but a stronger ability, like, to just let D'Lo yeah, run the yeah, offense, yeah, yeah. to let Austin run the offense. And I know you had that at different points in your career with different guys, but it seems like, you're more content at this stage in your career to like, I'm going to pick and choose my spots about when I'm the primary creator. And when yeah, yeah for ball. sure. I mean, I, I, yeah, it comes with trust. It comes with trust too. Um, obviously last year in the Memphis series, um, AR um, gained a lot of trust from me, um, but also had trust in him to make the plays. I believe it was game three. Maybe. Or game two. I think they had home court. Yeah, they had home court. So it was either game one or game two where in the fourth quarter, I, you know, just was like, AR, let's go win it for us. You know, and I wanted to see, like, it's, I play a lot of chess, not in real life. I, I've actually, you know, a lot of people have told me you should look, you should play chess because you'll be great. I've never played chess, but in, my, play, mind, in, yeah, in my mind, yeah, in theory, yeah, yeah. I feel like I play chess on the floor. Yeah. And I feel like if I could, get AR and instill AR and that confidence in that fourth quarter to make plays and win that game, it was just going to pay dividends for the rest of my time with him and the rest of his time when I'm not with him. You know, I, I, want, I, I love seeing the success of my teammates more than anything. Like, and so to have the ability now to be just like, I pick my spots, hey, D-Lo, you got it. You know, AR, you got it. You know, um, you know it means a lot, not, not only for me, but for our ball club. All right, I'm going to go over these blitz numbers because we're talking about two on the ball. And this is I, this is interesting. So this year, top five uh, players that have been blitz and pick and roll. Luca by Luka a lot. by far. By far, by almost far. 200 more blitzes. Sure. Uh, and then everybody, the next four guys are bunched together. It's Brunson, yep. Anthony Simons, Dame, yep. and, and Book. Mm-hmm. Top five by ISO, Giannis, Kawhi, yep. Julius Randle, Anthony Davis, and Ben Caro. Those are the top ben five, Caro, top by, five ISO. by ISO guys. Yep. It's interesting. I looked up your your blitz numbers in the tracking era, and you were first in ISO doubles in 13 and 14, uh, second in 15, 16, and top 10 in 17, 18, and 19, 20. You've never actually been in the top 20 in blitzes against pick and rolls. Why do you think that is? Because I make all the right reads. I think it's it's that simple. You're it's right. that simple. Teams there's, know they can't blitz me in a pick and roll. But there's what's interesting 
about Luca, I think he's one of a handful of guys in this era that can make any pass against a double team. Any. James is one of them. Yep. You you are for sure. Luke is one of them. Yep. So why are you blitzing him? I don't understand it. Especially with the shooting they, they surround yeah. him too. It doesn't make sense. Um, like I get the Brunson. The Brunson thing has been since Randall's out. Yeah. yeah. The uptick in blitzes yeah, has gone sure. way yeah, up, yeah, right? They don't, yeah, they don't have that. I get that. Yeah, for sure. I get sure. that. I get that as well. You know, you, you have to... He's he's a one head monster right now with the Knicks and they blitzing him and making other guys beat him. I saw Golden State do it a lot last night um, as well before our game. Um, but yeah, it doesn't because he's going to make every read and when Tim Tim Hardaway is hitting six or seven threes, you're done. Yeah, Kyrie's going to get what Kyrie's going to do what Kyrie does. Yeah, Luca's going to do what he does. But when you get Tim Hardaway hitting six or seven threes. And in our game earlier this year, we blitzed Luca and Dante Exum hit five. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Six threes. Yeah, that. that. <laughs> <laughs> I, yes, I, 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 I guess what's interesting to me with great players, because everybody always talks about mixing it up. You got to yeah, yeah, mix yeah. up the coverage mix and pick and roll. You got to yeah. mix up how you double, when you double, all that stuff, right? So, for example, wet, just so we're clear on this. When you double. What, by that, what I mean is a guy's in the mid post in isolation against right. the mismatch. Is it on the dribble? Is it on, on the dribble? Catch? Is it on the yeah, catch? Yeah, yeah, exactly. How you double. Is right. it, as you said, tilt. tilt. Is it coming from the, the baseline, baseline or is it from coming from the nail? Yep. Right? You, have to, you have to talk about all those things. I just think with spacing and with shooting, there's just no good answer. So if people want explanations about why we're having all these scoring outputs, it's because there's not a good fucking answer. No. Atlanta blitz is the most in the NBA. They decided not to blitz Luka Doncic because they were 70. worried about the consequences. And he had, and he had 70, 73. And he had 73. Right? There's yeah. just not good answers for the best players right now. No. And it's the and it goes back to the three-point shooting, as you said. Teams are afraid of teams hitting six or seven or eight threes in a game right now. So they that's this is where all the switching occurs now. Everyone's saying, okay, let's get to the switches. At least we will keep everybody home. But then you realize when you switch a non-favorable defender on a great player, if that great player knows it's going to make the reads, they're going to get threes anyways because they're going to drive, there's going to be a help, and then there's going to be a numbers game. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. So it has to come to a point. It's like, what are we, what are we willing to give up? Not what are we willing to stop. You can't stop great guys. You can't stop great players. Just hope they miss. But what are we willing to give up? And then you have to just tip your head. Like these scoring outputs is, uh, is insane. I wish I was back in like 2012 <laughs> right now. With the young legs. Yeah, with, with the, the young, young, with, young tires. With young, the young tires. tires. <laughs> yeah. The tires with only 11,000 yeah, pounds right, off. Right. Um, the switching thing is interesting too to me because – there's certain teams that can put switch heavy lineups out there, right? Yeah. You you get you need the personnel. Yeah, you need to the be personnel. Able to switch, yeah, you right? do. And you, you need do. to be able to trust certain guys. So like Ty Lue clearly trusts his bigs to yeah. be a switch. To the point, like going back to Luca, I played on that team in 21 that lost in game seven against the LA Clippers. Yeah. And he trusted Zubats yeah. to switch onto Luca that entire series, despite mm -hmm. the fact that Luca was killing him. Right. Because he didn't want to get in rotation. Right, right. right? So What's interesting to me, though, about the switching against switchable lineups, like yep. so you have five guys that are capable, yep. is how creative teams have gotten yeah. with de defeating the switches. Mm -hmm. So it's two of the hardest actions to guard, to me right now, are ghost screens with a great shooter yep. and running into a pick and roll. It's not a traditional slip. Right. You run into a pick and roll, you touch you the touch guy's the guy, back, you, and then you get behind, then you the, get defense. behind the defense. Uh -huh. And yep. if you have a guy like Kristaps Porzingis yep. or Jason Tatum that yep. is doing that, yep. you, you can't guard that. So yep. you could be like, oh, yeah, we're going to switch. Teams have now figured out ways to exploit yeah, switching. I, I mean, even I mean, I know Washington is in the shitter, but even last night in our, in, our, in our matchup last night, we got to a switching lineup, but Kuz was hip-tapping AR – and we were calling switch, and AR two, two times couldn't get back to Kuz, and he was able to get into the lane. He missed one, made one, but 
exactly what you're just saying. Like teams are figuring out ways to, when the switches happen, how can I exploit a switch? That's interesting. You brought up the hip tap too. So like on the ghost screen, you called it a bluff screen. Yep. The ghost screen, um, like you guys used to, when I was in New Orleans, KCP, I'd guard him. He would do this all the time. So let's say we are in a switch defensively. Mm -hmm. We're in a switch. If the guy slips on a ghost screen, my job is to go with him. Yeah, call square. Right? Square, square. Right. Slip, slip. But offensive players, as they're running up into the screen, they tap the guy on the hip. So you're switching on, you're supposed to switch on contact. Well, you feel the contact, you think it's a switch. Yeah, now the and, ball handles. And now I'll goes. open up and, and I'm gone. doing my job because he slipped, so I'm going with him. That's why it's hard. That's why it's hard. In real time, it's yeah. like, yeah, we can have all these rules, but then yeah. you gotta and you gotta do it in real time. That's why the NBA is the best league in the world. That's yeah. why it's hard for me to watch my son play college basketball. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go there? <laughs> I, why, listen, why is, why I loved is, you in college basketball. I fucking hated Duke, but I love yeah. watching you. I love Duke now because K is my guy now, obviously, yeah, yeah, for yeah, obvious obviously, reasons. Obviously. But it is hard watching a 40-minute college basketball game. It's hard. I almost, I get more anxiety and I sweat more watching college basketball, especially my son now, than I've ever done in my life. I still watch legitimate teams, ranked teams. <laughs> <laughs> they will run a play, and their best player will get the ball on the wing, and they will have a non-threat big man posting up on the same side. And the guard or the wing will drive into the occupied post. And I'm like, guys, it's 2024. We can all watch YouTube. There's a wealth of information out there. Why are we still playing this way? Well, I don't, I, I've never understood why a coach will throw the ball into a post to his big that has no business <laughs> with the ball in the post. The only time the ball should go into the post to the big, if he's automatically, as soon as he catches it, flatten the defense, he goes right back into a DHO uphill. Uphill DHO. Yeah. Roll. If he's not a pocket passer, you can't throw it to the you throw it to the rim. Or his job is to just shrink the defense because his role was so dynamic. I watch college games and I see guys throw the ball in the post to guys. And they'd turn around and shoot a jump shot or a running left hand jump this hook. One, this one drives me crazy. <laughs> you see, like a few young NBA guys that will get like because we don't post anymore. If you, unless you're like Joel Embiid and Jokic, right? right? right. You see young NBA guys will get a rebound and the defense will be on them and they'll, they'll shoot. You know the shot I'm talking about. <laughs> the big guy shoot. It's like it's not a real shot, man. It's not a real shot. It's, it's not, not a real shot. shot. It's not a real shot. There's what there's there's one other thing you can do in the post, which leads me to God fucking segue is so good, man. I love it. It's a good conversation. No, it's great. <laughs> People, somebody asked me this the other day. They're like, triangle concepts. Nobody, nobody has it, nobody runs the triangle anymore, right? Does it exist in the NBA? And the truth of the matter, there are still concepts that exist. They are. So we don't the Chicago cut, yep. which was when you throw it in the post, the guard would cut through, screen in the middle of the yep. paint for the big guy. You don't yep. want to switch that. Yep. If you do switch it, you know, Pekovic from Minnesota would yep. catch the ball at yep. five feet against sure. me and just jump hook, yep. right? Easy breezy. Yep. Teams don't really run the Chicago cut anymore. The two things that they still run, blind pig, yep. which New York runs for Brunson all the time, yep. where Hartenstein or Mitchell Robertson flashes to the elbow. Yep. You deny Jalen Brunson, he's Boop. getting that back cut yep. going downhill. They'll get into the step-up pick of rolls with blind pig action, yep. right? And then the Golden State post splits. Just splits. The post splits. The post splits. I have been wanting to have this conversation with you for so many years because yep. I have said the Golden State post splits specifically with that team, is like the hardest action to guard. Yep. I was doing research on something else the other day, and I was looking up, because uh, I was for a Boston game, because Porzingis has the highest efficiency in the tracking era for points per direct post-up, yep. right? He's, every time they switch a smaller guy on him, so he's what? mashing, whatever. Draymond was at the top of the list for a bunch of years. In 1819, he had the highest efficiency on post-ups of any player in the NBA. And you're like, well, Draymond doesn't score in the post. But they're throwing him the ball, 
and either Steph and Clay are running their action. We yep. saw back in 22, Wiggins would be the screener, slip for the yep. dunk. Yep. They also involved the big. So yep. Steph and Clay are doing their little dance. Yep. Looney then Looney, comes and yep. cleans it up. Yep, because right. the big that's guarding Looney gonna is drop. sitting in the damn paint. Yep. yep, exactly. It's the hardest thing to guard. Yep. You guarded it four straight finals. Yep. What are your thoughts on how to defend it? <sighs> when Draymond catches the ball in the post, the one thing, the first thing you have to do, you have to track his eyes. You can't track the ball because Draymond has the ability. What they kind of they they started to take out in our league is a swipe through. So obviously he has his back towards the basket. You have to track his eyes because if you track the ball with your hand, he'll go underneath your arms. He used to get that foul. The second thing you have to do, you have to get the bodies right away. And you can't get to the top side because Steph and Clay are great at back doors and get to the rim. You have to get to the lower hip of them and Who's ever setting the screen has to give a little space so you don't allow it to slip. And the guy that's guarding, either Steph or Clay, that's coming off, you have to get to the bottom hip of their shoulder and trail them all the way out. The two most important people in the whole thing is the two guys that's weak side. When they have those, when they have certain shooters out there, it's very difficult. But nine times out of ten, when we were playing them in the finals, it was at times it was JaVel McGee and Iguodala. It was Andrew Bogut, Sean Livingston, and Sean Livingston, Harrison Barnes. When everything went haywire, <laughs> when it was fucking Kevin Durant over there and another shooter. It was like impossible to guard because you couldn't help from the weak side because now Draymond's such a great IQ player. If you help, if you tag from the guy on the weeks, he throws it all the way across court. You can actually see, there's a play that you can watch on YouTube probably where they were taking the ball out on SOB. No. Side out of bounds. Yeah, not son of a bitch, sorry guys. <laughs> <laughs> side out of bounds. And I was getting ready I was 2 nining on the strong side because they were about to get into some split action. Steph takes the ball out and throws it all the way to the weak side corner by their bench. And I try to close out the KD because I'm looking, trying to shrink the floor. He throws it from the sideline out of bounds all the way across. I close out, slips, falls on the ground, KD dunks the ball. But back to your point that I don't understand well, I do understand why most most teams don't run it because they don't have they, they don't, don't have, have personnel. They don't have the personnel. They don't have. The there personnel. are certain teams that like right now. Mike Brown in Sacramento is kind of running some split action. Yeah. He has those shooters. He has he has you know obviously Kevin Herter. You know he has uh, the kid Keegan Murray who can shoot the piss out the ball, and also the speed of De'Aaron Fox. You know they they play a lot of pinch posts with Demonis, who's now triple double threat every you game. A, you need a passer like Simone You have stuff. to have, yeah. You have to have a passer. You have to have like a Simone passer. Or Draymond. Like yeah, yeah, exactly. You're like Demon is Draymond, Morgan Gasol back in his day. Um, you know, certain guys, obviously Joker, he does, he's one of a kind, but you have to have the personnel. You have to have the personnel. Um, the the thing with the post splits for me is like you can let's say they involved Looney. What do they call you? What do your what do your kids call you? That. No, when you when you coach, what do they call you? Coach, coach JJ, coach. Oh, they just call they, me JJ. They just call you JJ. Oh shit! Okay. Lock your iPhone first. No, we don't want to talk to you right now, Siri. They, they they just call me JJ. They just call you JJ. Okay, you got a good. By the way, chemistry with your I kids. tell them all this. I tell them this all the time. You brought up the 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 flubbing that ATO play. Yeah. I don't care if you miss a shot. I don't even care if you take a bad shot. I've never yelled at a kid or gotten on a kid for taking any shot. Right. I never have. Now I may after a game be like. Hey, you know, we were up seven with 42 seconds. You didn't need to shoot a right, contested right, right. step back three. We could have just dribbled <laughs> the clock out, right? What drives me crazy, right. though, is when I drop an ATO and then we go out and they forget it. It's like, dude, it's been 10 seconds. I my, my big thing with them now is like, don't worry about what I'm drawing up. Just watch you. Just That's pay it. attention to That's you. That's it. Just watch you. Just watch That's you. you. That's Anyways, it. Anyways, so let's say you involve K- Kevon Looney or whatever. Yep. And so the big decides to like, you know, be in a drop back here. Yep. So Steph and Clay, they're up here doing yep. their dance or whatever. Yep. Um, they're going to get an open three. Yep. Right? Yep. If you switch out 
with Kevon Looney's guy. I think what's always been difficult for me is someone who's guarded that action. You were talking about body position. Yep. Bro, sometimes it doesn't matter. They're so good. The second you get on that angle, the second you turn your head, the cutting to the basket is the hardest part to me. Yep. Like, I can chase over a screen and get a contest on three. But, like, they're just, they, they, they keep you off balance, which is interesting that you bring up the weak side being the key to the whole thing. But you, that's, that's like, what you're saying is advanced basketball IQ. You know what, it's, you're saying if I'm going Draymond in the post, Kevon Looney is at the quad. They're doing their thing. At the, at the free throw line. They're doing their thing. Yeah. You're saying that if he has a wide open three, why not? Are you saying Draymond's man just go take and then Kevon Looney just stays in the paint? Is that what you're saying? No, I, I'm saying as, as, as this guy. Right. As one of them. Yep. So we can switch this action. Yep. Let's say we're switching this yep. action. I'm saying if Kevon Looney is so worried, he's in this, his guy's in this drop, right. and he's off the body, we're going to live with the contested three. Yep, yep. Right? You're going to give that up if you're worried about taking the layup. Yeah, for the sure. The second you bring Kevon Looney up, they're getting a layup. Yeah, for sure. They're getting a layup. Yeah, you're going to lay up. They're too, it's too yeah, hard yeah. to guard. Yeah. The dance is too hard. Yeah, right. And they've done it yeah, so many right. times. You're absolutely right. You go back to that 22, dude, that 22 finals run. Where they just like, all right, so Wiggins is getting guarded by whoever, Draymond's got the ball, and we're just going to involve two people. We're not even going to put the big in there. Yeah. How many cuts did Wiggins get? He runs into the to the to the split action and doesn't and even split. stop. He doesn't even stop. Slips he right to it. And it's a layup. And you know what's dunk. interesting? You think about that that run. You talking about getting in the playoffs? You can't beat high basketball IQ teams with a low basketball IQ teams. No, there's no. And way. at the time. Some of those teams I didn't think were, were high basketball <laughs> IQ teams. You're absolutely right. It's interesting. Aaron Gordon talked about that because they, they beat them in the first round. And that was a big takeaway for me. Now, they didn't have the personnel. They didn't have KCP, right? right? They didn't have the personnel. Murray was hurt. Mm -hmm. But it, I'm not saying guy, I don't, would never say a guy's dumb. I'm saying basketball IQ. Yeah, yeah, for sure. They got outsmarted that series. Yeah. Jokic was a monster, all that stuff, but they got outsmarted. They got outsmarted. Mm -hmm. And Aaron Gordon has talked about coming off of that series being like, I got to I gotta become a smarter basketball yeah. player. Yeah. T to win at the highest to level. To win at the highest level. And he did it. He did it. There's a lot of things, other things I would do in basketball too. Like, it's a couple other coverages I would do. The pick-to-picker, the, <laughs> the pick B.O.B. -B. Not bombs over Baghdad, but baseline out of bounds. Yeah. America's play. Yeah, America's play. Yeah. You have the guard, you have the best shooter sitting in the middle of the lane. Yep. You have the biggest wing sitting at the top. Five is on the strong side. You have the point guard taking it out. Yeah, and then the weak side corner. In the weak the side corner. Yeah. When the no one ever, it's not many times that the guy, the wing that's coming down the middle, gets that pass, because in theory, if you're guarding the ball, one one thousand, two one thousand, take away the basket, and then jump out right to take away the shot. I've always wanted to. No coach has ever allowed me to do this or want or or giving me the 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 freedom to do this. The guy that's guarding the ball, when he says one one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand, why doesn't he just take the guard that's coming out for the pick the picker? And the guard that's guarding the the pick the picker guy just falls right to the to the guy that's taking the ball out. Yeah. You go one one thousand, two one thousand, JJ Reddick is flying off Left, right, where you know he's dangerous. He can shoot straight up and down if he wants to, or he's going to fade if he wants to as well, maybe kick you. <laughs> it's my natural shooting motion. <laughs> it's my natural shooting motion. I'm guarding the ball. I just take JJ, and the guard who was chasing you just falls right to the, to the, to the, to the, to the guy that's taking the ball out. That's one. That's not. We could talk about that. So, later. no, no. So what's interesting about that, I like that. I'll tell you why. Because like someone who ran that play, right? So... Whether I slipped or set the screen, I'm coming off. A lot of teams after two one thousand would send the guy guarding the, guarding the takeout guy. They'd send him to me. Yeah. The problem is, my guy's still chasing me. So what happens? I get the ball. I don't have a shot because now I got two guys at me. It's a quick pass back to the inbounder. He gets a layup. So don't chase you. That's what I'm saying. It's, take it's you, actually a good. It's actually a good take, coverage. Take you to the screen. Yeah. And at the screen. 
the X5 that's guarding the pick to picker big opens up and you slide right to the guy that's yeah. guarding. I would I didn't know if you wanted a second glass. I didn't know. Okay. I love talking basketball, by the way. <laughs> the other the other play, and it goes back to the ghost screen. Um that I think is really difficult to guard, and you've been the ball handler in this case, is the inverted pick and roll. Mm-hmm. So Giannis, fucking Jokic now, Embiid now, all these guys, they take the weakest defender, yep. they take a shooter, whatever it may be, and they go set an on-ball screen for the big. For the big. Last night in the Knicks game, Draymond had it at the top, and Steph was in the paint, to go set the, the high pick, to go set this inverted pick and roll. Now, Steph has a number of options here. He can slip out. He can set the pick. Yep. They can go back to a dribble yep. handoff if he passes Steph. Like, their two-man dance is really hard. Mm-hmm. They decided to top lock Steph so he couldn't get to the screen. And Steph, Steph just, screened him. Steph screened him into yeah. Draymond's guy. Draymond got a wide-open dunk. Yeah, That is an insanely difficult mm-hmm. action to guard. Fucking last year in the Western Conference Finals, uh, I can't remember which game it was, but it was in the fourth quarter. They ran that three times with Murray as the screener, Jokic as the ball handler. On the right, right wing. Right wing, right, right wing. in front of the bench. Yep, right in front of the bench. Yep. How would you guard that? There's uh, there's a couple ways you can... How do you guard it and how do you stop it is two different things. Depending on the ball handler and his shooting ability, if he's not a great shooter... Or numbers wise, he hasn't yeah. shot the ball well. Then the guard that's guarding the screener, just we call it a smack. Yeah. You stay body on body with the screener, and the big that's guarding the ball, X4, X5, whatever, goes too removed. So he goes not only under the screener, he goes under his uh, uh, teammate as well. If the big is not a great shooter. If, a, if the big has it going and he's shooting it well, i.e., you know, it could be, you know, Joel, it could be Przingis, it could be Joker, where he might be shooting it well, then the guard can get out and give a hard-ass hedge, and the, the big that's guarding the ball goes one remove. So he goes underneath his player, yeah. in between his player and the offensive player. If that doesn't work, then you have to switch and then fire. And that's what, with, with Joker, that's what makes their team insanely to guard because when you switch and you fire, he can make every single pass. And fire means double from the top. All right, so two things to this. Um, so in the first scenario, this, I'm, and again, this is why I'm, I'm asking you because yeah, sure. I want to tell you now why it's hard. And you know this, I'm not telling you, I'm telling the audience. The first scenario, which you described, which is a non-shooter, yep. i.e. Giannis, mm-hmm. i.e. Ben Simmons. Okay, so I'm setting an inverted, we called it 12, and we would get in, sometimes we get yep. into 12 rub rifle, which is then I would slip out, Ben would hit me, I'd swing it, immediately go to chase action with Joel in the right yeah, corner. Sure. I either get a shot or a pocket pass to Joel, right? But in a normal 12 rub with Ben, if the defense was all the way back. He has a runway. Not only that. I'm just going to go you get gotta, a dribble handoff yep. and get a wide open shot. Yeah. So if you want to play off of Joel yeah, no, with Maxi mm-hmm. and Maxi wants to, Maxi just go get the ball and shoot yeah. a ball jumper yep. at any point in time, right? The other reason I think this is so hard because I, I I took a lot of pride in my screening. Big guys are terrible at navigating screens. For sure. So in the second scenario, when mm-hmm. you're talking about going third man removed, that sounds great in theory. Right, right, right. The problem is... I mean, maybe I was just speaking from no, a... No, 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 no. I have Anthony Davis, so... I know, I, yeah. I know. Who's <laughs> a, who's a hybrid, know. but yes, you're absolutely right. That's that's the other you're part absolutely of this. Right. Is like, and by the way, they let guards. They just do. Yeah, they didn't. I can hold, yeah, hold, hold yeah, yeah, for He's sure. He's not used to like... Yeah, yeah, for sure. Shooting the gap. No, you're so right, like, you're you right. You go run like a normal pick and a normal high pick and roll where I'm going to screen the five man first. You know, I go down, screen the five man, I can come back up mm-hmm. into Spain action or I can go out to the corner. Like, I would sit there, I'd sometimes be on the screen for four seconds. Yeah, for sure. They don't, they just don't know what to do and then all of a sudden they're you know, chucking me in the throat or pushing yeah. off and I get an offensive And that's out. what makes it even more dynamic because then when you have a guy like Giannis and Ben when he was in his groove you know, and Joel and now Jokic, they have the ability to, you know, obviously Giannis is like the the best at it. And today he has the ability to 
have the defense go one way and then the guard will flip screen yes. it. So now the guard that's guarding Bearage X2, Bearage out screen, of Bearage course, the screen. Bearage Bearage screen. <laughs> He'll be on this side getting ready to show or blitz or hedge, and now they flip the screen, and when he crosses over, there's nobody over there. It's, you don't, and then once Giannis get, gets to the, to, the, to the launching pad, you know, it's over. He's going to dunk you and the ball in the rim. Come on. Let's do it. Grab my other glass, man. JJ, don't want to finish this. Oh, yeah, yeah. I brought these from home, man. Was for, for How you? Zoltos? Yeah. <laughs> you know it. LeBron, thank you for your generosity with the wine. Well, I appreciate it. I do appreciate it. I'll, I'll, I'll make sure. You know, I, I, home court. Home court. Last time I was ready. Last time I was ready. So I'll, I'll have some for you next time. I'm not ready, man. I, ain't, I can always bring the wine. Listen, I got plenty of it. I'm needing somebody to drink with. Hey, guys. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching Mind the Game podcast. If you like it, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you.